So today I'm going to talk about law cards anatomy, just basic anatomy. And so here I have a preserved uh, Tyrioplichthes josimanus. Um, I've had her for about seven years or so and she is um, donated to me. Um, and she did die um, of sort of natural causes. So here we've got the general body plan. Um, so we've got the body, the head going from the neutral region forwards, the snout, eyes, and there's, of course, going to be at the front. Um, sensory organs tend to be focused at the front because you want to sense where you're going, not what you've just left. Then we've got the caudal peduncle after the um, uh, adipose fin. But I assume with fish that don't have an adipose fin, such as a canthicus, you might be measuring from the end of the dorsal fin. So, main thing, catfishes don't have scales, lower carids therefore don't have scales. These are dermal plates. So they're formed of, I believe, a similar structure to bone. And they're solid, they're very good for protection um, and just maintaining structure. Otherwise you wouldn't have such a sort of obvious fish as this. So the dermal plating does vary in its sort of shape, um, shapes and structures really depending on the low carid we're talking about. So here the plating goes over the head. So you can see here, whereas in Cistrus, it will sh stop short around that. And you can also see that in like Ketostoma, which is your rubber noses and also the um, Ancestrus is. Uh, bristle noses so they have got this dermal plating it's more solid and less obvious as plate so much on the head but if you were to sort of break it down you can actually sort of dissect to the different plates so we've got um different bones here so this is the compound teriotic we've also got the terio ter occipital, which is this bone here it's like the round one um and I, I would assume the neutral region generally is sort of more regional over multiple bones. And we've got loads of different ones. Uh, we've got the frontals, which is about sort of, oh, it's very difficult to see on this fish, especially, so, ah, that's better. Um, it would be like, oh, these bones here. And then we've got also the sphenotic. There's loads of different <laughs> um, dermal plates, basically. And the, um, there are up a few articles showing the different ones, um, which may on a, not specimens, but show a bit better. So covered it, covering these dermal plates and over different portions of the body, we've got odontos, they are external teeth. They're full of them of dentine, but they're not really uh, they're teeth in a loose sense so they generally cover the body um the extent the size will vary depending on the taxa um they tend to they can be larger known as hyper hypertrophoid and this can occur on the cord and the uh fin spines also on around the head so such as in um uh, Pseudoncistrus, um, Pseudolichthosis, um, no. So I mean Neblichthys pilosus, which has, they have quite large odontos around their head and they tend to be sexual dimorphic. You might also have large ones around the caudal peduncle. Um, and also, of course, you've got Ancistrus, which might have tentacles and these are formed of the sheaths that cover the odontos as they're developing, a bit like gums um, of teeth. So that's sort of the, the, the odontos and the dermal plating is very distinctive, um, particularly with Laurel Cardo, but you do see dermal plating in such like Corydoras and Calyctidae, all very much for defence. Like with all fishes, we've got paired fins. Well, most fishes actually, not all. Um, so you've got paired fins. So these are the pe pectorals, the large bones. This is the pectoral fin spine. They can lock almost into place, but they can lock. Um, and that's really just to keep the fish. If it wants to stay in something, it's not going to come out. Um, 
it can be used in aggression and such. The next paired fin is the pelvic fin or the ventral fin. So you can see that these, that's just behind the, um, as you can see the pattern quite well on the camera, just behind the pectoral fins. This also has a spine. They might have larger dontos. Then we've got the more singular fins. So this is the dorsal. This is, a, um, so the soft rays here are what you're most likely using to count for uh, different uh, morphometrics to identify species such as Ancestrus dolichopteris uh, might have eight to nine soft dorsal rays, whereas the others tend to have less. Um, then we've got the little adipose fin. This is not present in all lower cars. Acanthacus doesn't have it. Um, but they vary in morphology depending on the taxa, obviously. Um, in lower cars, they tend to look quite similar. Um, but you've got like ba um, Bagridae, which has a more fleshy. Even uh, Mochocidae, which includes the Cynodontis, is a more fleshy um, adipose fin. This is the caudal fin. It's not... I wouldn't say it's entirely correct to call it a tail fin, it is a caudal fin. And that's where you can see sort of, that's the main anatomy of the top. If we turn it round so you can see how bad they've butchered it, the next fin is the um, anal fin. And then this is where the genital propelia would be and the anus. Um, we've got the pec, uh, what was it? pelvic girdle here attaching and I would say is an anchoring point for the muscles for the uh, pelvic fins. We've got the pectoral girdle here. Both are formed of multiple bones. Um, they're quite interesting, the anatomy of them. They're quite intricate. But this one's for the pectoral fins. Here you can see that, so the gila percola, these are up here is a vertebral plate. It's not all orchids have them. They can have large odontodes as well, just not in this um, species and not all avert, but they will have that gila percola because the gills, which are used for ventilation to get oxygen into the blood system, is found just in there. So we've got the mouth, we've got the dentary and the maxillary, the maxillary with, so these are two bones there, two bones at the top, and these hold the teeth for eating and just getting at food. Um, you can see being a detritivore, this fish is really good for getting in. Um, feed on finer matter, it's not a carnivore, but it's um, uh, it's just trying to get detritus, algae, stuff like that. So it's got more numerous teeth, more teeth. Um, next bit is the suction pad. This is part of this real trophic anatomy. And then a lot of people don't notice it, but they do have barbels like many catfishes, um, they're just not that obvious. But you can see the general anatomy here. Um, also, you might be, if you think about anatomy, also think about how these bones form, the differences in them. A uh, lower car is massively diverse and you, there'll be different sort of, um, what would it be? Different plans of how the fish um, so you are, might have flatter fish, um, so like Pseudohemiodon, where this is going to be stretched out a lot more. Also, as I said, Ancestrus with less dermal plating around here. You might have eyes in different positions. Um, Ancestrus macropothalamus tends to have its higher up there. And you also might have differences, well, in a lot of the bone structures. And then also in the suction pad, um, stuff like Pseudohemiodon, um, particularly, they use this suction, um, they produce sort of long ornate extensions to their um, suction pads and that might be used for breeding. So the feeding function is, can have, well, it can have a dual function, but it might affect how they feed, although these are, they're sand dwelling, so they don't really need it. The caudal fin is variable. You, there's different types of caudal fins. Um, so here we have a fish that's got sort of equal lengths to both spines of the caudal fin. But you might have one that's longer. You might have tail extensions, which are more fleshy. Um, so they are, you look at quite a variable anatomy of fishes. And I've done plenty of videos if you want to look at 
different anatomies. You've got broader fish, you've got shallower fish. And then really looking at this anatomy will help you identify different taxa. Um, and don't just look at above. You also want to look underneath um, because that can show a lot of anatomy. And here you can see from above, especially if you look at all these dermal plates, and they are fascinating. I think the dermal plates are very similar to placoderms, which is a prehistoric group of fishes um, that did show dermal plating, although all the photos I've seen, it was more the front end. But it's quite interesting how convergent it is. Uh, we've got different uh, the different rows of plates here. So on the dermal plating, um, they do have, um, you would possibly maybe want to sometimes count for some taxa, um, how many, but it's, <laughs> yeah, I've done it a few times. Um, but I think that's it. Thank you for watching and I'll be filming more videos soon. Thank you.